Well, good day to you and welcome to worship, dear Easter people. You are so glad you're joining us for our new worship series, Practicing Resurrection. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We continue to not just stand at the empty tomb wondering what this means, but we continue to practice this new life we've been given in Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Brandon. Preaching today is a double dose of Vigas's, our adult ministry director, Amy, and our deacon, Hunts. The Vigas's are bringing the good news of Jesus to us this morning in this sermon. And please remember that all Easter members are invited to our annual meeting on April 28th at 7 p.m. We are meeting using Zoom technology. We're asking members to please log in between 6.30 and 7 to help with taking attendance. All of the meeting documents are on easter.org, our website, under events and news. If you are a member and did not get a letter with information on how to access the Zoom video conference, or if you misplaced it, please email jpeliquin at easter.org. That's Jennifer Peliquin. And her email address is j p e l o q u i n at e a s t e r dot o r g, and she will send you the video conference link. Thank you so much, Easter people, for joining us for worship. We wish we could be together face to face, but thank you for staying home and for staying safe. We're so glad we can gather in this way. Now, please join us by singing robustly our opening worship song.
Wow, thank you, messengers, for that wonderful worship song. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. Risen God, we we rejoice rejoice with with you today. By your resurrection, you dismantled the fear of death. You destroyed death itself. You opened the way to full life today and for eternity. Yet we find ourselves living in unsettling times and uncertain days. Lord, show us the way to claim and practice resurrection life here and now. In the name of Jesus, our risen Lord, we pray. Amen. And now join us as we sing our next hymn. children's message. We're going to read from our Spark Story Bible the lesson today. Early Believers. Some of the early believers were great at sharing. They shared their food and their clothes. They shared their money and their homes. They were so generous. No one was poor or needy because they others gave without holding anything back. Together they saw many miracles and wonders. They met in the temple and they met in their homes. They talked about Jesus and they thanked God for blessing them. Then something amazing happened when other people saw how happy 
these first believers were, sharing all that they had, talking about Jesus, they believed too. They became Christians and they shared their food and their clothes, their money and their homes. They became one big Christian family and their church family grew and grew and grew. When I was little, we had this saying, have you heard it before? Here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door and there's all the people. Our church doesn't have any people in it right now. Our doors are closed, but our homes is where we all are and our homes is where we talk about Jesus. Have you noticed when you're walking along the street, you look at other people's windows and their doors, maybe their sidewalks, we want to make our front doors happy and joyful and know the love of Jesus. So let's all put a cross on your front door. I just colored it with many different colors. We'll have a template on the website and I encourage you to take a picture of your front door and send it to me at rgill at easter.org. We want to do this front door movement together with all the other churches around us. So send those pictures in. You can do lots of different things. I have paint sticks and I just colored my paint sticks. So let's see all those pictures and let's pray. Repeat after me. Dear God, help us to show the love of Jesus on our front door. A -a 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 Amen. Today's reading is from Acts, chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their numbers that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. Hello, Easter. I was going to say good morning. Uh, for you, maybe it is good morning, but we are uh, kind of late at night. Um, this is about the only time that our house is quiet uh, where we can do something like this. Uh, 60% of our kids are in bed, so it's relatively quiet compared to the rest of the day. Um, my name is Hans Vigasa, and I am a youth minister at Easter Lutheran Church, and this is... I'm Amy Vigasa, and I'm the director of adult ministry and one of the worship leaders at Easter. And clearly we're not social distancing, but we're married, <laughs> so I think it's going to be okay. Um, today, uh, we continue in our series of Practicing Resurrection. It is the third Sunday in Easter. Uh, last week, uh, Pastor Brandon introduced us to the book of Acts, um, Acts chapter 1. And today, we're looking at the end of Acts, as was read, uh, Acts chapter 2, verses 42 to 47. Um, but there's a really important part of Acts that we kind of skipped over. Um, we're going to circle back around to that at the end of May. But there's a few things that we need to say that really helps us understand what this, these particular verses are about and what they mean and their importance to us. So at the very beginning of Acts chapter 2, there is something called Pentecost or the day of Pentecost. And in the Bible, it is described as a violent wind from heaven that comes down and fills the house where the disciples are, are gathered together. And as this wind comes down, it appears to the disciples as tongues of fire on each one of their heads. And, and it fills them with the Holy Spirit. Um, this action, like I said, there's much more we can say about this. In fact, there'll be an entire sermon of this in a few weeks. Uh, but a couple of things that this, is, that this signifies, and a couple of reasons why this is important, is that this action, these tongues of fire, this descending of the Holy Spirit, indicates that God is doing something new. Um, that God is marking the church, everyone in the church, as belonging to God. 
And then the disciple Peter stands up and he preaches to the crowd that is gathered here in Jerusalem, um, 3,000 or more people. And this, this gathered crowd, this group from literally all over that kind of Mediterranean rim, he listens to his words and are amazed by what he has to say. And they do some soul searching. They wonder, they literally say, what should we do? And this then leads into our verses today. What we read today is that some kind of community was formed. It was built um, on these words and on this work of the Holy Spirit. We aren't given a timeline to exactly how quickly this happens, how quickly this comes together. But what we hear early on is that there seems to be four pillars or four standards in which this community comes together. Uh, the first is the apostles' teaching, and then fellowship, and then the breaking of bread, and the prayers. Now, some of these are ones you would expect. A church that is based on teachings, you would expect that. A church that is involved in prayers, you would expect that as well. Um, teachings give us, give us ideas of what do we believe in, and how are we making decisions based on what, and what am I supposed to trust? Uh, and prayers... Uh, invite the, the congregation to be with one another, to pray with one another, uh, asking God for things and thanking God for things. Um, also, how many times have we witnessed in the Bible where Jesus left his disciples, went up into the mountains to pray, uh, to be with God? So much so that the disciples, when they saw him do this, asked him, Lord, what are you doing? Teach us to do what you do. Teach us to pray. Teach us to do that. The breaking of bread has a couple different meanings here. It could mean the sharing of the Lord's Supper, about doing communion together. Um, but this breaking of bread can also mean sharing meals together, sharing common, everyday, ordinary meals together. And it seems to be that, that both of them are true, that this breaking of bread was not only done as an act of worship, but it was also done to, be, to eat together, uh, to be shoulder to shoulder together. And then the last pillar uh, is this idea of community, of being in fellowship together. Now, as I said, our current series is Practicing Resurrection. And um, as we think about those four pillars, as we think about what they meant to the ancient church, uh, what do they meant to the very young church, I think we have to ask ourselves, what do we notice about those four pillars and what do those four pillars mean for us as the church today? And so I'm going to ask Amy. Um, Amy. Yes. Hi. Yes. What, when you read, when you've read those four pillars, uh, what are some things you noticed? What are some things that you were drawn to? And besides maybe just that overt meaning of teachings and prayers and fellowship and bread, what do you think is behind some of those things? What could they mean? Well, some of the things that I noticed is... Uh, this was really beyond uh, just what we would think of as our Sunday gathering. This was really about everyday life. It was the whole way of being together and really incorporated just ordinary everyday life. And um, it made the ordinary holy and it made um, what we consider secular parts of our lives sacred. And I think that's really an important thing to note is that because the Holy Spirit um, was so infused in everything that was going on, was such a powerful force at this particular time in the church, um, it made all of their life transformed. Mm. And so even their relationships with one another were transformed in a way that uh, their interactions became a holy exchange and I think that's important for us today because right now we're spending so much time in our homes, in our everyday life, <laughs> that um, it's important to see that those domestic things, that, um, that just everyday stuff uh, becomes holy when um, it's seen in light of the resurrection. So I wanted to share a quote. I yeah. have a quote if I get to read it. So. Um, this is, uh, I just love this, especially for us right now, that we don't need to escape our homes to find God and sanctity. We don't need to run away from home to pray. We need to follow Christ's example and empty ourselves 
entering more deeply into the mystery of the domestic mess and finding the wholeness and holiness that waits for us there. And I just love that because um, that's really where we're at right now. We can't even escape our homes. So um, to find the holy within um, our families and within the people that we interact with every day and how we share that community with each other is uh, very much the picture of this early church, but also where we're at right now. So we look at um, these uh, pieces, these four pillars about the early church, and really what draws me is this genuine community that um, they are forming, that is being built, and really is shaping them. These four pillars is really giving them some identity and shaping them into this community that is really quite genuine. And I, I being the director of adult ministry who works with life groups, I see a lot of genuine community in our mm. church today. And that people are really um, finding community in a smaller way um, in a large church at Easter by being in a life group. And um, even as we are sheltering at home, we hear all these stories from life groups that they're still trying to connect and they're still making sure that they reach out to each other and are there for one another. And that's really a cool thing to see right now. So um, I love that. I love that. Um, that genuine community is still very much identified in our church today. So yeah, I, I really was drawn to the idea of of a domestic mess, especially. Uh, we have a domestic. We mess. have a domestic <laughs> mess, more than you can ever imagine. Um, but it, the domestic mess is beyond just the clutter and beyond just the stuff. It is sometimes a domestic mess in our relationships. Um, we have a household of seven and a hedgehog and a dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are times where it feels like we are on top of each other. Um, we have five kids in online learning from fourth grade to freshman in college. Third grade. Third grade. <laughs> uh, he's just so old for his age. Um, and so we are bombarded by assignments that are due um, and things that need to get done. And the longer we are in this, the harder that mess is to manage. And so there's a domestic mess in not just material things, but a domestic mess in, in relationships. And, and I love that reminder um, to think of God being incorporated in all those things. I read one uh, scholar who said, we are tethered to the Holy Spirit mm. in the things that we do and in the things that that's what made this church. I love that image. Yeah. It's really... That... That's what made this church, I think, look for those, look at those pillars. They weren't prescripted. There wasn't a manual. There wasn't a how to do church with four things. You need these four things. It seemed to be a natural occurrence, outcoming of the Holy Spirit descending upon these folks um, to do church together, to, to understand and to find out what it means to do church together. Um, and so that image of being tethered to, to the Spirit in our relationships, in the things we do, um, helps us become community better, helps us become um, people that belong to God and people that are faithful and listen to God. And I think that, especially now, is is really important. Um, and it's something that I have been reflecting on as we try to figure out how to do ministry. Um, we do youth group Wednesday nights through Zoom. And as hard as, as it is to not be in physical presence with people, it is really helpful to see faces and hear voices mm -hmm. that you only get to hear maybe once a week, um, that you were so used to being shoulder to shoulder with, so used to giving hugs and high fives to. Um, so that, that, that influx of the Holy Spirit, remembering that that's who we're connected to. Um, and then I think the other thing this church did was they were just aware of that. Like they didn't, it wasn't a force of will to do these things. It was a, a listening. It was a product of their listening and reacting um, to what they're doing. I, I, I have a friend who is a retired pastor, which means that he's never really retired because someone is always asking him to do something. Um, and what he says, uh, he says, this is how I understand faith. I do not need to know all the answers. I don't always need to know why. I just need to stand up. Uh, and I love that image of the only way you get something done is you have to stand up. 
Peter stood up to get out of the boat. Jesus stood up to bless children. Um, the disciples stood up to go preach to all the world and all the nations. Um, often not knowing why or how. Um, but what my friend, Pastor Bill, says is I just want to be used by God. So I, the only thing I need to understand in faith is how can God use me? And that's what I hear these people doing is just listening to God. Well, yeah, and I think the other thing that goes, that kind of comes from that is that we see not only this genuine community that's happening among the people, but also this very active and alive compassion. And um, the church really being church to one another. They're taking care of each other, making sure that everybody's needs are met, which I think um, some of the images in this passage um, almost seem unattainable because of that because it's this very communal living where they're sh they share everything in common and they're selling what they have to make sure that needs are met and I think there's a piece of that that feels a little uncomfortable for us but we really do see it in the church today as well um, the spirit is moving and active and people are taking care of each other's needs I mean you and I have experienced that over and over and over in our lives yeah. where the church has um, the people of the church have really reached out to us and helped us when we've needed it and in ways that we were not expecting it and that were huge and very meaningful for us. And I'm sure that all of you have had different experiences like that where other people in the church have reached out and cared for you. Um, and especially now we have people that are... Um, we have the uh, people that are reaching out with care calls and we have people that are writing cards to treehouse kids to make sure that they're encouraged right now. We have people that are just reaching out in all sorts of different ways to make sure that people are cared for, mm -hmm. which is a wonderful thing to see. And you've mentioned before, too, that with youth ministry, um, going on the mission trips has really exemplified Acts 242. Yeah. Yeah. It, in fact, my when I was a kid some 400 years ago, um, my youth pastor used, I called our youth group 242. That was the name of our youth group. So I've been reflecting on this text on and off for a long time. And, and one of the things, yep, mission trips are absolutely, I think, an example of that because you are immersed in a culture and a community that does, that does God stuff nearly 24-7. The first people that wake up in the morning are prepping breakfast for the entire group. Um, after that, there's a group that is engaged in cleaning up the, the building that you're in, again, for the entire group. You do devotions together. You go out and serve in different groups together, and then you come back and process and praise uh, before you, you go to bed at night. Uh, so the, from the time your feet hit the floor until the time your head hits the pillow, you are engaged in some kind of God stuff, especially the stuff that, that Acts 2.42 talks about. So as we think about what it means to be the church today, reflecting on Acts 2.42. First, we just want to thank you for being the church, for showing up, for standing up, for being a community that shows compassion. That's really what it means to practice resurrection. This is how we live life together as the church, and this love is what draws people in. So keep being the church. Yeah. God's peace to you, Easter. We'll see you on the next Zoom call. See you later this week. Thanks for being church.
Please join me in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hey, Easter family. It's good to be together with you in worship today. Uh, I'm wearing my Guatemala poncho because I actually just been working on some video for the Guatemala Gala that's happening on May 3rd. We're doing a virtual gala, just like we're doing virtual worship right now. So I thought I'd keep it on just as a reminder of our global partnerships and all of the wonderful ministry that Easter is doing as we partner with God and what God is doing in this world. And so as we come to our time of offering, I just want to remind you that even though we're not gathering together in a physical space for worship, the church still exists. Ministry still happens. We have teaching going on through Zoom calls. We have small group leaders connecting with their small groups of all age levels. We have pastoral care happening through phone calls, through Zoom calls. We have Pastor Brandon who is doing uh, funeral services in driveways with his trumpet, with his, <laughs> with his trombone. It's amazing. You can't stop ministry and ministry, uh, functions on the generosity of this community. And so we encourage you to continue your faithful giving to the work that God is doing here. There are many ways that you can give. You can send a check in in your envelope to Easter Lutheran Church. You can uh, press the button right there on the live stream page, or you can download the app Give Plus uh, on both your iPhone and your Google Android phone. So there's so many different ways to give. Continue to pray for this ministry as we all work together to grow in faith and carry on the work of Jesus Christ.
now we lift up our offering to God as we join together our voices in the words of this offering prayer. God of Easter life, every day is full of your love and blessings. Give us bright and joyous hearts, ready to respond to all in need. Raise us to new life in you. Help us be your joyous witnesses to the world. In your living name we pray. Amen. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of breath. We celebrate the gift of your Holy Spirit that breathed new life into the disciples so long ago and formed the first church. That same spirit moves in and through us. May we breathe deeply of the Spirit's power today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, while we celebrate the gift of breath, we also remember that so many are struggling to breathe today as they have been stricken with COVID-19. Grant healing to the sick and comfort to the grieving. We lift up the healthcare workers, first responders, and essential workers that put their lives on the line each day to make sure we have the essentials for our lives. Grant them peace and safety. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift up to you the students and teachers who have lost so much of their educational experience during our stay at home season. We think especially of the high school graduates whose final moments and festivities around graduation have been stolen away. Comfort the real grief that comes from this loss. Surround their loved ones with grace to make the transition special in their own way. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we lift up our community partners, both local and global during this pandemic. We learned today that in the church, no one should be in need. Yet we know that many of our partners already live on the fringe and lack basic necessities for life. Now more than ever, they have need of essentials. Please grant us the wisdom and grace to know how to help supply those needs in any way we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we lift up to you those in need of healing in mind, spirit, and body. Crystal Lewis Curtis, Lona Smith, Royce McEwen, Laura Backman, Isaiah Kranz, Blanche Brommer, Don Schultz, Carmen McShane, Kevin Lane, Melinda Martin, Russ Blair, Jody Taylor, Steve Hammer, Marion Newyar, and Eric Eric Strupp Jr. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comforting God, we lift up to you those who are grieving the loss of a loved one today. Helen Murphy, Jake Murphy, Sue Cable, John Lemke, Anna Braun, and Jason Viana. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up all these things to you today things we have spoken, and things we have left unsaid, in the confidence that you are with us and for us as we travel this journey together. We pray in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I have lived in the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so Your goodness is right.